we have an Earth-directed solar storm and on its heels, a fast wind chaser. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week has definitely calmed down compared to last week, but man, things are still pretty exciting. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, you can see two coronal holes. One of them had been passed through the Earth strike zone, and we've been getting a little bit of storming from that. But back on the 11th, pow, right there, did you see that? That was an Earth-directed solar storm from old region 2987. And in fact, when we take a look at coronagraphs, you can see there's a full halo right there that confirms that this storm is Earth directed, and we'll talk more about prediction models in a minute. But once that storm arrives, you can see there's another coronal hole off to the sun's east. That coronal hole is going to be sending us some fast solar wind right on the tail of this solar storm. So we're going to kind of get a one-two punch, and that should bring some decent aurora down to mid-latitudes, maybe for a day or two before things begin to quiet down. Meanwhile, the solar flux has kind of died down a little bit. We only have two active regions on the Earth-facing disk right now, so it's a big difference compared to about a week ago. Nonetheless, we're still hovering about 100 for solar flux, which means amateur radio operators and emergency responders, your propagation should still be pretty good in uh, on the day side, but things might calm down a little bit before they get better. Now, as we take a look at our far-sided sun, this is Stereo A, and it's looking at the sun just a little bit from the side. You can see those two coronal holes early on, but they begin to rotate off of the sun's west limb in stereo's view. You can also see on the 11th that big BAM right there, that big uh, solar storm that's headed toward Earth. But now take a look on the, the stereo's east limb. You can see a few regions that are rotating into stereo's view, and a couple of them are, especially the one in the north. These are solar storm producers. So these look like they could actually begin to give us some decent uh, boost to that solar flux. They also might be big flare players. We won't know for another three or four days, but as they begin to rotate in stereo's view, and to Earth view, it looks like aurora chances are still going to be on the horizon. Now, getting back to that solar storm, we switch to our prediction model, Enlil. Now, this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And when we take a look, you can see that solar storm launching, but you can also see that it's launching, especially if we look down at the bottom panel, you can see that sea of green. That sea of green that's chasing that solar storm, that is the fast solar wind. So you can see that we're actually going to get hit by that solar storm first, and then that fast solar wind will come as a chaser. In fact, that fast solar wind is actually causing this storm to be a bit of a density plug. So it's actually going to be quite dense, we think, as it comes in hits Earth. It also will be a direct hit. In fact, the impact is expected to be about 8 o'clock UTC time on the 14th, according to this model, and it should bring us some decent aurora clear down to mid-latitudes. Now, as we switch to the NASA's version of the model, again, you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. In this case, the solar storm being launched is a little bit slower. The impact is a little bit later, coming closer to about noon on the 14th. But either way, that's a pretty good agreement, and we should see aurora down to mid-latitudes. It's definitely a direct hit. So uh, all you Aurora chasers, be sure to keep your batteries charged. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the second quarter phase on our way to a full moon with a full moon on the 16th. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some aurora during a solar storm, you're going to need to check your local rise and set times because you have this bright companion that might make things a little bit tough. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that Earth-directed solar storm with that fast wind chaser, and this should be a pretty good hit. In fact, at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting major storm conditions with up to about an 80% chance of a major storm, in fact, and this could last over a couple days from the 14th into the 15th easily before things begin to settle down over the weekend. So your aurora photographers at high latitudes, definitely get ready 
ready for this show. I know some of you are worried about that, that midnight sun coming up or beginning to lose your nighttime hours. So this may be the really uh, last big chase of the season for you. Now, mid-latitudes, we're not expecting as hard a hit, just minor storm conditions, but we do have up to about a 25% chance of a major storm. And again, it could last in through the beginning of the weekend before things settle down because of that fast solar wind. So get ready, Aurora chasers, even at mid-latitudes, you could be in for a show. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is back to being in the green. In fact, we only have two active regions on the Earth-facing disk right now. This is region 29, 88, and 89, and neither of them are big flare players, so we don't really have to worry about that. So you GPS users, you should be very happy. You should have great GPS conditions for reception on Earth's day side. Now, because of this, we also have solar flux kind of not really tanking, but just kind of going down a little bit. We're back into the double digits for the first time in, oh my goodness, I don't know, maybe a month or so. It's likely not going to last all that long. We're going to be hovering around 100. So radio propagation on Earth's day side should remain pretty good. It's just Earth's night side that might be a problem when that solar storm hits that could cause you some issues. So be aware of that. And now also we basically have climbed out of solar minimum. So the cosmic ray flux has definitely settled down and we have no risks for radiation storms right now. So we're back into the D1 normal range and that means everybody is in the clear. So the space weather this week is definitely very exciting. We have an Earth-directed solar storm that should be hitting us right around the 14th, probably before noon, and it could bring aurora clear down to mid-latitudes. Now, it will be chased also by some fast solar wind that could extend the storming a little bit longer, and that means great news for aurora photographers, both at high latitudes and mid-latitudes. Keep your batteries charged because you could get a decent show. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you you know, things aren't too bad. We have dipped down back into the double digits for solar flux on Earth's day side, but just barely. So radio propagation on Earth's day side should remain pretty good. We definitely don't have any risk for radio blackouts. And the only thing you need to worry about is when that solar storm hits, you might get a bit of disruption on Earth's night side. But hang in there because it looks like we've got new regions rotating into Earth view here in the next week that will then boost that solar flux back up into the triple digits for you. And now GPS users, well, you know, it's not so bad. The day side is pretty quiet. We don't have any radio blackouts, so your reception should be perfect on Earth's day side. And then on the night side, well, as long as you steer clear of Aurora and clear of those dawn dusk uh, terminators during that solar storm, your GPS reception should be pretty top-notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.